Come on, if we serve an okay God, then an okay praise would be good. If we serve a mediocre God, then a mediocre praise would be good. But does anybody serve a good God? I know it's nine o'clock, but does anybody serve a good God? Has anybody been delivered, been brought out of some things? Amen. Amen, amen. While you're standing, real quick, I got 15 minutes to land the plane. Galatians chapter 1, I'm getting right to it, so I can enjoy the conference tomorrow. Galatians chapter 1, tomorrow we're in for a treat. The main sessions, we're calling it Gliding in Galatians. And tomorrow, here's my team. I got Mike Holloway, Galatians chapter 3. And we're pumped up and excited about that. And then we have my pastor, Stacy Foster, Galatians chapter 4. And then back and clean up, we got the elder, Damon Richardson, Galatians chapter five. Amen. Grab your Bible really quick. Galatians chapter one. That's my assignment today. Galatians chapter one. The louder you are, the quicker I'll preach. It's going to be a long message. We're going to be here till about 11 o'clock then. <laughs> Galatians chapter one, verse six. Let me get right to it. I'm amazed that you are so quickly turning away from him who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. That's it today. Let's, let's read it one more time. I'm amazed that you are so quickly turning away from him who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel gospel. Do me a favor, Contenders Conference, if you're not too stuck up, high-five the person next to you and tell them there's only one gospel. There's only one gospel. You may be seated. There's only one gospel. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you would speak to us in this moment. Give me clarity of speech, clear articulation, but let you be glorified with my words. As the grass withers and the flower may fade, it is your word that stands forever in Jesus' name. Amen. The Great Pyramid of Giza is the largest Egyptian pyramid in the world and served as the tomb of Pharaoh Khufu during the fourth dynasty. The Great Pyramid is a massive four-sided pyramid that became a wonder due to its sheer size, precision, and mystery surrounding its construction methods. Although this pyramid is the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world, it is the only wonder that is still intact. And for thousands of years, people have marveled and been amazed by its grandeur. When people see this great pyramid, they often say, have you ever seen something so amazing as this? In our text today, the Apostle Paul, he's not amazed at the great pyramid of Giza. Yeah, yeah. He is amazed that so many people in the church are leaving the gospel. The reason we started the Contenders Conference last year because I am amazed how many people who claim the name of Jesus look at a meme or a YouTube video and then turn away from the gospel. He's writing this letter in response to a crisis that has risen in the Galatian church. And here's the crisis. They're confused on who Christ is. <laughs> the reason we have the Contenders Conference because it seems like there's some confusion on who Christ is. False teachers referred to as the Judaizers have crept in to the church. They have that TLC anointing. So I creep. Let me get to my text. 
they're trying to bring people back to the law, Jewish customs. They're, they're trying to say that it's Jesus plus something. Yeah. Right. They're trying to say there's something that you have to do in order to maintain your faith. Paul catches wind of these legalists and reminds him, or these believers, of their liberty in Christ. He starts off this letter, and this is what he says. He says, I wasn't called by men. I wasn't called by you. I was called by Jesus Christ who raised himself from the dead and gave himself for our sins and rescued us from the evil age according to the will of God, our Father. As I was studying this particular passage, I noticed that there was something different in this particular pericope of Scripture. That there was something different because Paul normally starts his letters with a thanksgiving and a praise. He normally starts his letter with congratulations or a thanksgiving and praise, but Paul's different. Paul grabs his pen and pinpoints the problem. He doesn't give him pleasant platitudes. No, Paul pronounces a curse on anyone who preaches something different and antithetical than the gospel. Paul tells us there is no other gospel. So the question today that we need to answer is this. How do we keep ourselves from turning from the gospel? All right. I got 10 minutes. How do we keep ourselves from turning from the gospel. I don't care what pastor gets on the radio and says we need a new gospel. We don't need a new revelation, we need an old revelation. Because any pastor that's thinking about growing weed is the one that's smoking it. That we need a new. Uh, I got seven minutes. He says, I'm amazed. I'm perplexed. I'm confused. How quickly. Now I don't know about you. I'm not talking about my church. I'm talking about your church. I'm not talking about my church. But have you ever been amazed that you can preach a sermon, you can study, and they come up to you and shake your hand and say, good message, Pastor and you're feeling yourself, then you go on their Facebook status wow. yeah. 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 and see that they're quoting or yeah. sharing a video from someone that is not preaching the gospel. Oh Paul says, I am amazed. I'm confused. What, not just with y'all? I'm amazed how quickly you're turning away from the gospel of grace. It means to be extremely disturbed. He's spiritually ticked off. <laughs> He's disturbed. He's disturbed because people are confusing what the gospel is. The gospel is good news, it's not good advice. The, the gospel is that Jesus is the Son of God who was born of a virgin sinless. Yeah, yeah. And the only way to be redeemed and saved is by his grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He who knew no sin became sin so he yeah. could be the righteousness of God. Born under the law, kept the law, yeah. the same law that you and I break every single day. And through that sacrifice, I got five minutes. On the cross, he didn't say that he's finished. He said, it is finished. He fulfilled the law. Got out of the grave as a risen savior. For 40 days, he taught one message, the kingdom of God, ascended back to heaven and sat down because it's finished. And you can't get him up because it's finished. I'm amazed. I'm astonished. I'm confused. That word gospel is eon galeon. It's the idea when a messenger gets a message from the king and declares that victory has been won. So in this particular passage, what Paul is saying is a king during that time, when they won victory, they would have a messenger or a herald 
the same word we get the word preach. That messenger would go back to the citizens and let every single person know that victory, Eon Galeon, has been declared. That messenger was not allowed to take the message from the king and twist it and pervert it. Because if that messenger twisted and perverted, that messenger would die. Our message as preachers of the gospel is to take the message from the king and preach the message. Not the message that I want to preach, but the message that the king wants us to preach. I got three minutes. I'm amazed. My watch don't even work. I'm front. My watch don't even work. It's... <laughs> be flat. Be flat. Be flat. 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 Keep me in flat. See, there, there's four categories of people that are here today. The first category is some of you are saved and you know it. Anybody in this room know that you're saved? The things that you used to do, you no longer do. Then there's another group of people, you're saved and you don't know it. Because someone has told you, you have to add something to your faith. But then there's another group of people, you are unsaved and you know it. You're like, man, I know I'm a trip. I know I'm not saved. I just came for the brownies. I just came for that all access pass tomorrow to get some cupcakes, I know. But then there's another group, and, and, and Pastor Mike, this is the group that, that's the most hardest to reach, to be honest with you. Unsaved and don't know it. You put your faith in tradition. You put your faith in what you do. But you never put your faith in him. Matthew chapter seven says, I never even knew you. There was never a relationship to begin with. What Paul is saying, listen, he's saying that that I'm amazed, and this is what he's amazed about. See, I'm not talking to people outside, I'm talking to us today. He's not amazed that false teachers have crept into the church. Most of his letters are warning that false teachers would be in the church. He's amazed by us sitting in this room today that false teachers are teaching, but that we're turning away from the gospel. Boop, boop, boop. I gotta back down on up like a U-Haul truck. Let me get it one more time. He's not amazed that false teachers are coming into the church. He's amazed how quickly you and I are turning away from the gospel. Tell the person next to you, there's only one gospel. There, there's only one gospel. Turning is this idea, it's a military term. It's deserting, it's, it's putting your pledge of allegiance to one group and changing to another group. It's when you enter the transfer portal. He's saying, I'm amazed the same way that the Colorado football team got in the transfer portal when Dion said, I'm packing luggage, is how quickly you and I are turning from the gospel. He's amazed how in the world can you worship on Sunday, but then on Monday you're putting on your fringes? He's saying, <laughs> I'm amazed. How in the world? I spent time with you all. I discipled you. I left you in good hands. But yet I'm upset. I'm amazed because you're allowing people to put you back under the very thing that you came out of. But there's still hope because this process is, it's a present verb, which means there's still hope. In other words, they're, they're turning, but there's, a, but there's another way to be brought back. And what Paul is saying, listen, there's still hope. You're, you're turning away from the, the gospel of grace. But this is what I know. When you're not faithful and you're fickle in your faithfulness, you become susceptible to false teaching. 
when you're fickle in your faithfulness, you become sus susceptible to false teaching. He says, you're, you're turning from the gospel. That's the same word used in Hebrews 11.5 when it says that Enoch was taken away up to heaven. He transferred to the presence of God. I'm amazed. I just want to give you this story as I, as I close. Trust me, I got about six more verses, but I want you to come back tomorrow. I was watching this podcast Stephen Jackson. You guys remember the, the melee at the palace 2004? Yeah, when Ron Artest went into the stands. <laughs> and then Stephen Jackson came and Stephen Jackson was like, ah! And, and you know, Stephen Jackson was so upset at Ron Artest because he lost $3 million and Ron Artest never said thank you. Years later, last year, Steven Jackson's on a podcast with Isaiah Thomas. And Isaiah Thomas is reminding him of the fight at the palace. And he says, Stephen, hey, you remember the fight at the palace? Stephen's like, yeah. You remember how you got kicked out the league? And he's just scratching his head. You got kicked out the league. But Isaiah said, because of my relationship with the commissioner, I went into the office and you were kicked out the league, but because of my relationship, I saved you from being kicked out the league. I saved you, I redeemed you back from being dispersed out the league. That, that's not what got me. Steven Jackson looked at Isaiah Thomas, I'm finished, and said, I forgot about that. How dare you and I Forget that we are saved by grace. It has nothing to do with what we do. How dare us say we forgot about that. Anytime we believe that we're going to heaven based on our works, we're basically saying we forgot about Jesus going to the cross for our sins. I don't know if there's anybody in here, listen to me. I, I don't want you for about 30 seconds, I don't want you to shout because you got to check in the mailbox at home, we'll shout off of that. I don't know if I'll ever get paid more money, we'll shout off of that. I wanna know if there's anybody in this room for 30 seconds that's willing to praise God because you're saved by grace. He redeemed you. He snatched you up. You were on your way to hell, but he saved you by his grace. There is no other gospel. Come on, come on, God's here. Healing's in this place. Healing's in this place. Come on, let's worship God just for a few moments. Would you just lift your hands? We're saved by grace. works if it's by works we're done it's a gift we're saved by grace through faith so no man can boast if it's works then it's boasting <laughs> anybody believe healing is in this place listen to me when you just say the name of Jesus stuff starts to change come on let's just lift up a word of praise real quick Amen.
relationship is healed. We have been reconciled back to the Father. I see that. That's that free gift. Healing is here.
Would you purify our minds right now? Would we let go of the confusion? Because you're a healer. Not only will he heal your body from sickness, he'll heal your mind. So dear Heavenly Father, I pray that today people were encouraged. But tomorrow, people will come with an expectation. Not that they'll just get information they'll actually be transformed by the Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, can I just pray for a moment? Maybe there's someone in here with a need. Hey, someone here with a sickness. I believe healing is here for that too, in the name of Jesus right now. So what we're going to do is what the song says. We just receive it right now, that we're standing on your Word right now. Maybe there's someone in here you need to know Jesus. The Bible says if you call upon His name, you shall be saved. We are saved by grace through faith. It's not a gift of ourselves. Just sing that just one more time. Come on, do you believe it? You thought you were just coming to an apologetic conference. Come on. You are the God. Sickness can't stay. Your perfect love is casting out fear. You are the God of all power, and it is your will that my life is true. Believe it in your heart. Sickness can't stay. All time. Your perfect yeah. love is casting out that fear. Jesus, would you heal us in this moment? Because you are the God. You are the God. Heal our minds, our body. Heal relationships. Come on, he's working on hearts. He's working on minds right now. Six sickness can stand. Sickness can stand. It's your love. It's your love. Lord, we know you're the God. more time just put your hands together for the Lord. Is anybody blessed tonight? God bless you.